The Christadelphian Broadcast Ministry presents The Kingdom of God. Join us every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. for the program, The Message of the Kingdom of God, presented by Christadelphians Hall, right here on the Tobago Inspirational Network. My dear friends, as we focus on the kingdom of God, we are fulfilling the command of the Lord Jesus Christ, you see, to go into the world and preach the gospel. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that does not believe shall be condemned. You see, the gospel is the good news or glad tidings. If I were to share some good news, the natural response would be, well, what is the good news all about? The good news, my dear friends, is about the kingdom of God, a concept taught by the Lord Jesus Christ. And one day, my dear friends, this earth will be filled with the knowledge and glory of God. Though this message is not consistently emphasized by ministers of the gospel, it was the central teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ and his apostles. And we will let the word of God speak as we look at Matthew chapter 13, going in at verse 1. It says in verse 1, the same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, a great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a soul went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecies of Isaiah, which say, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed least. At any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Join us, my dear friends, on the other side of the broadcast with your Bibles. And so, my dear friends, there are times when ministers of the gospel must allow the Word of God to speak for itself. You know, encouraging their listeners to research and reflect on what is proclaimed. Too often we find people are eager to accept the message as truth solely because it is delivered by a seemingly knowledgeable minister or somehow the message in and of itself tickles their fancies. And this can lead to the corruption of God's Word. Not necessarily through uh, what you may term deliberate deception by ministers, but through the misinterpretation of scriptures, which can have severe consequences. So my friends, do not merely consume sermons or online Bible talks and accept them as truth without cross-referencing them with the scriptures. Engage with the word daily and strive to comprehend it on your own. You see, if we forsake the habit of reading, 
in favor of passive video consumption, we, we risk becoming a generation that lacks independent thought and critical thinking and understanding. Let us diligently, my friends, study God's word, ensuring that our faith is founded on a bedrock of truth, which would make us wise unto salvation. And so, returning to Matthew chapter 13, I, I would like to approach this parable in a unique way. Through the question asked by the disciples in, in verse 10, before addressing the parable in and of itself in verse 3 through verses 9, and it concerns the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And by the way, my dear friends, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are synonymous terms. That simply means the kingdom of the God of heaven. Now, here in verse 10, the disciples said unto the Lord Jesus Christ, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? The Lord Jesus Christ replied, he says, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them mm, it is not given. Now, really... The Lord Jesus was speaking to everyone that gathered at the seaside by way of parables. And let's say that the disciples understood all of the parables, save the parable of the sower. The question in verse 10 should be, why do you speak in parables? That should have been the question. The Lord Jesus Christ said in verse 11, because... It is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. An open parable, my dear friends, as well as to the disciples. And yet the Lord Jesus Christ said, but unto them it was not given. It was not given for them to know the interpretations. The word given here, my dear friends, in, in verse 11 is the Greek word dote, which means, which means to give. In this context, it indicates that the understanding of the kingdom of heaven has been granted or given to the disciples by God through the Lord Jesus Christ. The disciples did not acquire this understanding through their own efforts. Instead, it was divinely revealed to them by the Lord Jesus Christ. And the phrase, my dear friends, the phrase, the secrets or the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven refers to the mysteries or spiritual truths of God's kingdom, which are only accessible through divine revelation. So in essence, Jesus is saying that, look, the disciples have been given a unique understanding of God's kingdom, which was not available to everyone. And while it is true that these divine truths were not hidden in the sense of being deliberately concealed to prevent understanding, they were not readily apparent to everyone. But anyone who needed further clarification would have asked. And like the disciples, they would have been informed. And not how, my dear friends, the Lord Jesus preface his remark in verse 9. He says, Who had ears to hear, let him hear. The phrase, who had ears to hear, let him hear, is a metaphorical expression used by the Lord Jesus Christ over and over again in the New Testament, particularly in the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It is a call to spiritual listening and understanding. In essence, he that had ears to hear refers to those who are spiritually receptive and willing to listen. To hear, my dear friends, means to truly understand and comprehend the spiritual truth being spoken. Let him hear is an invitation to those who have the capacity to hear and understand to actually listen 
and receive the truth. In other words, the Lord Jesus Christ is saying that not everyone has the spiritual capacity to understand the truths he is speaking. If they did not have that capacity, all they had to do was ask. And it would have been revealed. Just as how it was revealed to the disciples. But those who do have the ability to hear and understand should pay attention and receive it. Therefore, while the mysteries were not hidden in the sense of being inaccessible, they required an active pursuit and a receptive heart to be understood. Those who needed to know and ask, who genuinely sought after the truth, were given the understanding they sought. And this phrase has become a famous saying in the New Testament, often used to, to encourage his listeners, encourage people to listen carefully and discern the spiritual truths being shared. And so the moral in all of this, my dear friends, is to accept nothing on account of the messenger, but scrutinize the message. And that's, that's the principles of the brethren at Berea in Acts chapter 17 that we refer to in many of our broadcasts. It is a principle of yesterday. It is a principle for today. And it will be just as good for tomorrow. The multitude, you see, failed in this regard. And the Lord Jesus reminded them in verses 13 through 15. He says, Therefore speak I unto them in parables. Because they seeing, see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. And note verse 14. Verse 14 he says, And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, who said, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand. And by seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. For this people, he says, their heart is wax gross. And their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed. Least he says, least he says, at any time, they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their hearts and should be converted. So therefore, my dear friends, it is good to believe what I am saying here. But it's even better to fact check what I'm saying by reading and studying the Word of God. And, and that said, my dear friends, let us return to the parable of itself. Here in Matthew 13 at verses 3. And he spoke many things unto them, he say, it says, in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went out to sow. Now, a good farmer always selects the best seeds before sowing. In the parable, we see nothing wrong with the seed itself. And by the way, the seed represents the word of God, the message of the kingdom, the good news. Now these expressions are all synonymous terms. The divine word can make us wise unto salvation and is what we cherish in our hearts to keep from sinning against God. This word is alive and powerful. It's quick and sharper than any two-edged sword. It discern, my dear friends, the thoughts and intents of the heart with unparalleled precision. The metaphor signifies the effectiveness of God's word in revealing truth and making distinction. Overall, the passage not only underscores the profound depth and power of divine scriptures in, in, in examining and revealing and transforming the human heart, but my dear friends, it also illuminates God's plan to fill this earth with people who would reflect his glory. It conveys the message of the kingdom, which is received differently 
by various kinds of hearers. And Brother Carter, Brother Carter noted in his studies, the seed sort of tests the soil. In other words, the preaching of the gospel tests and reveals the readiness of men and women for divine purposes. The, the first test of the soil by the seed is in, is in verse 4. When he sowed, some of the seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and, and devoured them up. Now, the Lord did give the meaning in verse 19. But I would like us, my dear friends, to note something here in verse 4 that will further enhance the interpretation in verse 19. In Matthew 3 and verses 3, we have the words of John the Baptist. For this, he says, is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness. And what it says? Prepare ye the way of the Lord. You see? Make his path straight. Now, the Greek word for way here is the same Greek word for the wayside, where the seeds fell when the sower was sowing his seed. The sower is spreading the same message of the kingdom that was prepared during the time of the Lord Jesus and is still being proclaimed today. When the Lord Jesus Christ taught his message faced constant opposition by the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and even the scribes, my dear friends. They opposed his teachings at every opportunity. In Matthew uh, uh, 13 and verse 19, Jesus mentioned the wicked one, snatching away what was sown in the heart. In Luke chapter 8, and in Mark chapter 4, the Lord Jesus explains that this is concerning the same parable and refers to the opposition as the devil and Satan, respectively, who take away the word from the heart of the hearers. This makes sense, you see, not because Satan is a fallen angel who tempts people, and uh, as popular theology would, would suggest, but because the Hebrew word for Satan means adversary, someone who opposes or resists the great adversaries of Jesus during his ministry were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The condition of the ground or the receptive heart matters when the word is received. You see, God knows the type of ground each of us represents and the distractions that leads us away from understanding the word. It is not about the word or where it was sown, my dear friends. It was about our need to truly understand it. Jesus meant this to those who received the seed by the wayside. And to clarify, my dear friends, Satan was never an angel in heaven. God's immortal angels do not and cannot sin. There was never a war in heaven where God dwells. The issue is that the word is still being preached, but very few people take the time to truly understand it. Many are led away, my dear friends, not because of the word, but because of their lack of understanding. Today, Few people take time to understand the word of the kingdom. Many rely more on emotion than understanding. When that emotion fades, they are led away from the path of knowledge. They are snatched away by anything that opposes the word of the kingdom. And in verse 5 of chapter 13 of Matthew, 
The Lord Jesus continues in the parable. Some of the seeds of the soil fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth. Again, my dear friends, the seed is the word of the kingdom. The seed word of the kingdom can find germination upon any soil as seen in the heart of the individual. Joyful at first, but had no root in himself. So that when tribulation or persecution arise because of the word, by and by he is offended. And like Job, we will be exposed to tribulations in this life. And have to subject ourselves to the hands of God. With the deepness of the earth we will endure. Knowing that God will not give us more than we can bear. The shallow response can be seen in what his wife expressed. Life is not always a bed of roses you see. We are continually exposed to the heat of tribulation. And we can either grow by it or be destroyed on account of it. And we make that answer now. Now as we go to verse 7 of Matthew 13, it says, And some fell among thorns, and guess what? The thorns sprung up and choked them. And Jesus alluded to the thorns as the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, which can choke the word, making us unfruitful. The, the word you see, cares for what is in the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of this world. The consequence of Eve's action in Eden is on account of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. When she saw that the fruit was good to eat, the lust of the eye. She took and ate the lust of the flesh. And the desire to make her wise, it was the pride of life. And guess what? The world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. That is in verse 8 of chapter 13. Where, my dear friends, where the soil was good and the seed grew, brought forth some a hundredfold some sixtyfold and some thirtyfold it is he that heareth the word and understandeth it which also beareth fruit and bring forth some a hundredfold and some sixtyfold and some thirty the preacher the word and the soil may the word of the kingdom find receptive hearts time taken to ascertain whether these things are so. May the Lord teach us the things we do not know. May the Lord help us to confirm if those things are so, thus making us into a people that we are not. Well, I see that my time is up, and I thank you for your time. Until next time, may the Lord richly bless you. Christ the King is coming
Christadelphian Broadcast Ministry presents The Kingdom of God. Join us every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. for the program The Message of the Kingdom of God presented by Christadelphians Hall right here on the Tobago Inspirational Network. Amen. 